Hello and welcome to Oscoe. Today I'm going over a free lunch unboxing that I did yesterday, May 4th. May the 4th be with you. Um, I will, We don't get free lunches very often, uh, maybe once or twice a month, but we did end up getting one this week. Um, we were low on some of the things we knew we would get from the free lunches, like milk. Um, this is a service that's provided by a federal grant that started a couple years ago and is actually ending at the end of June uh, for the end of this school year in 2022. Really hoping to raise awareness so that the federally funded free lunches for all students age 1 to 18 continues. Such a great program and really helps a lot of kids out. Please like and subscribe and comment on if they offer free lunches in your area. Thanks. Hello and welcome to Oscoe. Today is May 4th and like I mentioned in one of my earlier videos, we did go get school lunches today. Um, we have a neighboring district that provides them to the community, um, which is basically, it's all kids, um, the federal program is all kids ages 1 to 18. And our local school district also provides them to the community and their definition of community is um, kids who are not in school yet, you know, like ages one to five, pre-kindergarten basically. And then also um, if you are a homeschooling family or if you are attending a school that does not participate in the free lunches program, which our school does not participate in the free lunches program. They, they just don't provide lunches to anybody. Um, everybody has to bring their own. So, um, we go every once in a while, we haven't gone in a few weeks, maybe close to a month, um, since I can't remember, it's beginning of April and I guess it's now the beginning of May, maybe we went the second week, I don't know, we haven't gone in a while, so we decided to go this week, um, we're doing a no spend month for May and we were out of milk, <laughs> well we have a little bit left, we have maybe half a, half of a half a gallon of milk left, so a quarter gallon. Um, so we did need to get milk and they do provide a gallon per child per week. So we got some milk from them. Um, it looks like this is good until 512, which is, let's see, today's the fourth. So we have about a week, a little over a week. And then milk, of course, is good, you know, past its um, best by date. So it's usually good for about a week after if you keep it cold, which we will keep it cold. Um, and then it looks like... We got some apples. They gave me this crate. I don't, I don't really know what I'm going to do with it. <laughs> but they gave us apples um, this week. And we got, let's see how many pounds these are. There's two three-pound bags of these small apples. And I was actually looking in our fridge this morning. Like, we always have apples in the fridge. And it looks like my, um, we only have a few apples left. So I was actually thinking of buying some apples. Because apples are something that just lasts forever in the fridge. But now I don't have to. Um, that's enough that that would last us a couple weeks at least, maybe even a month, that, that many apples. Um, but I'll probably make apple crisp, which my daughter has been asking for me to make, so it'll be really good. And then they had this bonus item, which is, I don't know, they just asked me if I wanted oatmeal, and I was like, sure, I'll take some oatmeal. But these are two pounds each, these quick oats. And my kids do like oatmeal. Um, in the morning, especially my, my daughter will. So, um, and then I also have a really good quick oat, no bake cookie recipe that, um, I'll probably make. I'm trying not to eat sweets. These are not gluten-free oats. So there is a difference between regular oats and gluten-free oats. And the main difference is that the gluten-free oats are processed, um, in the facility that's dedicated gluten-free. Um, and the regular oats are not, so there can be some cross-contamination, <clears throat> and there can also be some cross-contamination um, with the growing process with regular oats if they're grown too close to wheat fields, um, which is crazy to me how that can happen. But um, I do only eat gluten-free oats, and I do, I have like, I bought a 25-pound bag of them from Bob's Red Mill at the beginning of the year, and we've used probably... I'd have to look at it. We probably used a quarter or a third of it so far this since I bought it in February. So, I mean, I do eat a lot of oats in general, um, even besides the oatmeal that I eat, uh, the packets almost every day. 
but I make an oatmeal bake. Today I'm eating the last of it. So these will definitely get used. Um, I don't know, I guess I should look at the expiration date on these and see how long they're good for. They're good until December, so we will definitely use these by December. Um, I'll probably have the kids make cookies this weekend, um, and then I just won't eat them. So we also have some boxes. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna move some of this. I'm gonna put this milk in the fridge, and then um, we'll open up these boxes. So one sec. Okay, so my husband came home in between. So <laughs> luckily, I stopped filming when I did because the dogs would have been really barky. So I opened up the boxes, and there was um, this big thing of strawberries. Uh, my daughter loves these strawberries. And then these green beans, which are two pounds of green beans. Um, we definitely will eat these. I don't remember if I already have a package open or not, but I'm making tater tot casserole today for my um, daughter. So I believe I use these tonight or later. And then we got more of these like pre-cooked parboiled potatoes. We have a lot of these. Um, we kind of had to take a break from eating them for a bit, but We'll definitely use those. Uh, so let's see what we have in the bags. So we have two kids that are home, so we get two bags, two boxes with these bags in them. So it looks like there is the usual cheese pizza, the pancakes, which we um, make those into French toast. Let's see, here's the other pancake, the other pizza. Let's see, these are my son's favorite, these chocolate chip bars. There's some cheese, bagel, and let's see, hot pocket. And then these are like these little ham and cheese sandwiches that are pretty good. Chili. And then there's oh, a hamburger. I think people like that. A bean and cheese burrito, and then these are one of my daughter's favorites, these maple waffles, she eats them for breakfast. What's this? This is a chicken burger, and a waffle, banana bread, see, more pancakes, and then these pinwheels are pretty good too, the kids literally like these, they have like cheese in them. And then this, what is this, like a taquito, a burrito or something, that's hot. So my husband will probably have to eat this one because it's spicy, <laughs> kids will not eat that. And then more of these, um, these we, the kids just don't like these, so we'll pass these on. So there you go, that's what we got this week for our um, box. So this plus the oats, and then I already put the apples in the fridge and the milk in the fridge. But this is supposed to be uh, five days of breakfast and lunches for two kids. Um, and I feel like our particular school district is pretty generous. I mean, like two pounds of green beans is enough, way more than one child would eat, I think, in five days. Um, it's a lot of green beans. Like when I make tater tot casserole, I only use, you know, the top. I use probably a third to half of this, depending on how many I put in there. And that feeds us for you know, a few days, so, and these strawberries, like, this is two pounds, I think, probably, of strawberries, maybe even three, that's a lot of strawberries for one kid to eat, plus we got three pounds of apples for kids, so it's a lot of food, um, for the, for the week, um, so I guess, you know, they're going to end this program, the federally fund, federal funding for this program is ending at the end of June of this year, um, and it really serves a lot of people that um, either are kind of on the edge of being able to qualify for food help, like like lunches or um, food stamps or anything like that. And it also helps families that um, are just not making enough to pay the bills. So for us, it's helpful because it um, provides some pre-made meals. And then we also get a good selection of vegetables and fruit, which we incorporate throughout the week. Um, but it definitely makes it easier when packing lunches if they can just microwave their own food and send it. Like, they'll just come in in the morning and grab these. I'll put them in the fridge so they're thawed. They'll just come in and eat that for breakfast. They already know. You know, the pizzas. We eat pizza on Friday night. And then this, these my son will definitely eat. And they're a little sugar than a lot of the other bars that he eats. So, 
it's a great thing from a lot of families. We really, I really wish that they would keep doing it farther, you know, just in general, free lunches for all the kids. So thank you for watching. As always, please like and subscribe and comment. Does your school district still provide lunches for the community or do they only provide them for kids that actually are in school in person? Um, I know it's kind of different for every district. So thank you for watching. Bye. All right, let's see if I can do this one handed. But one of the things I wanted to show you that I do with the strawberries in particular, because thawing out this large, gigantic bag of strawberries, um, like it's too much to eat. You know, if you thaw the whole thing out, then they usually go bad. So the one of the things that I will do is I will put some in a container. I currently am out of small Tupperware containers and there's not a lot of room in my fridge. So I'm just going to stick them in here in this jar and then my daughter knows that she can grab them and they're pretty good, like kind of half frozen. She likes to eat them. So I'll just do that and I'll just put a few in a jar. I mean, this is like a cup and a half worth of strawberries so that we're not thawing out the entire thing at once. And then I just stick it in my fridge somewhere where I have space. <laughs> can you tell we've got a lot of leftovers right now so there's not a whole lot of space ah, I have to find it but what's in here look one single strawberry I will probably just eat that <laughs> but um, I just stick it in the fridge somewhere and then I just let her know that it's in there and then she can have it this is the cabbage I made yesterday for leftovers and then the other half of the cabbage and then this is some of the chicken this is my lunch today this is the last of that chicken with rice and then some of the cabbage. And then we have some cooked carrots that will probably get eaten tonight. This is the last of the broccoli and the pinwheels. So, and then this, this right here is my breakfast. It's the last of the baked oatmeal I made a couple months ago. It's been in the freezer. Maybe I made it last month. I don't even remember, but I'm gonna eat it today and it'll be good. Um, so that's gonna be my breakfast. I'll probably make more tomorrow. Yep, probably tomorrow. All right, have a good day. Thank you for watching our May 4th, 2022 free lunch and breakfast unboxing from our local school district. This program is ending at the end of June of this year, and I really think it's a great thing to have, especially for those kids that may not get lunch or breakfast otherwise that don't necessarily qualify for the free, um, the the reduced free and reduced lunch program that school districts traditionally had before this um, free lunches for everybody came through. Um, feel free to check out some of my um, recipes at askaway.com where I go over some of the things that we make with these and also some of our gardening content, which I'm very excited about. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment uh, what kinds of things you get in your free lunches and have a great day.